Good morning and welcome to Home Church Online here at New Life Christian Centre, Christie's Beach in South Australia. It's beautiful autumn weather this weekend and uh, as we worship God, let's think about His blessing upon our lives. Let's think about His grace and I pray that God would tr- touch your heart as we worship Him today. Why don't we open to- together in prayer? Father, we thank you for your presence, Lord, with those that are participating and watching right now. And also here, we just thank you for your touch upon our lives. Thank you that you're the one who is the source of our life. And I pray that you'd bless those who are watching and participating today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, it's great to have you with us. If you want to find out about what's happening in the life of our church, New Life Christian Centre, then at the bottom of the uh, Facebook uh, page there, you'll see links to our website and other things and also on the YouTube as well. So if you want to find out what's happening, you can check out our website and also the other links that are there. Just want to commend to you today the uh, Connect News. That's available uh, through the Adelaide uh, Christian Centre website, Adelaide Christian Centre website. You'll find all the information about Adelaide Christian Centre, our congregation here, and also our congregation in Tennant Creek because we're a part of Adelaide Christian Centre now as a congregation. So please check that out. And uh, you'll find out all the information and the life and ministry that flows out of Adelaide Christian Centre and our three churches. Uh, Also, go to our own uh, website. That's www.newlifeonline.org.au. It's always a mouthful, but if you check that out, you'll find out what's happening in the life of the church. Wonderful. Well, we're going to um, give you an opportunity to worship God with your tithes and free will offerings. If you're worshipping with us today, then that's obviously something that we celebrate every week in the life of our church. I'd like to read to you the words of Jesus, who said, Give and it will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So these are wonderful words from our Saviour. He promises that as we give, it'll be given back to us, pressed down, shaken together, running over, uh, good measure, it'll be poured into your lap. You know, it's a biblical principle and it's also a principle of life. We know that we, we, we gain from what we sow. What you sow, you reap. That's just a principle of life, whether it be in agriculture or in everyday living. And in our relationships, in our finances, in everything that we do, it's just a God principle that's there. And uh, Jesus promises us that as we give, he will provide our needs. And so as we give today, let's thank God that he is the one who meets our needs. And I'm praying for God to touch your life at this time. Father, we pray that you would touch the lives of those that are watching and that you'd provide their every need. God, whatever their need at the moment, if it's financial or a job or uh, healing in their life, or whether it's relationship matters, God, we just pray you'd undertake and sustain and help people in their lives at this time. Gee, Lord, you're the great provider. You're our source, and I pray that you would bless everyone that's giving today. We thank you for the privilege of giving. We thank you that we can uh, worship you with everything that you've given us, and we give today as a token of that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless, and if you want to give online, then just go to our website and check out our giving page, and you can see everything uh, relating to how you can do that online there. So God bless, uh, sit back and enjoy some time listening to our children's and youth talk, and also we're going to gather around the table of communion also. If you, if you need your bread and your cup, go and grab that quickly, but we're going to share communion together as well. Good morning. This message is entitled, Too Good Not to Share. During court proceedings, witnesses are more than onlookers or spectators. They are active participants who help determine the outcome of a case. The same is true of our witness for Christ. We are to be active participants in a matter of absolute importance, the truth of Jesus' death and resurrection. When John the Baptist came to tell people about Jesus, the light of the world, he did so by declaring his knowledge of Jesus. And John, the disciple who recorded the events, testified of his experience with Jesus. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Apostle Paul would elaborate on this idea as he told young Timothy, 
The things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. All Christians have been summoned before the courtroom of the world. The Bible says we are not mere spectators but active participants. We testify to the truth about Jesus' death and resurrection. John the Baptist was the voice of one calling in the desert. Our voices can be heard in our schools, workplaces, neighbourhood, church and among our family and friends. We can be active witnesses telling them about the reality of Jesus in our lives. Because of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, he is alive and present with us today. Whatever situation we face, Jesus understands and cares and he will carry us through. Let's give thanks. Lord, we give thanks for your knowledge of our circumstances and your care for us. Today we want to walk with you and honour you in all we do. Thank you for your forgiveness and thank you for your healing. In Jesus' name, amen. So take and eat and take and drink. The gospel is too good not to share. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today I want to speak about being inclusive and embracing diversity. I want to share with you what Jesus says about diversity, what embracing diversity can look like, and why we need it in God's family. God's family is the most diverse one out there. Our brothers and sisters have different personalities, appearances, and cultures. There is not one of them that is the same. Did you know that it, that it is proven that we find it easier to accept those who are similar to us? This also means that we find it harder to accept those who are different to us, those who are diverse. However, Jesus tells us to love one another as he loves us and to look at others' hearts. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height. For I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God doesn't look at our outward appearances, but at our hearts. God doesn't judge us by what we look like, where we come from, or how much money we have. He looks at our hearts. Now, with God's children, there are many differences, but we also have some similarities. We have the same heart, the same spirit and the same mission. We have the same heart towards Jesus, the same spirit that God gives to us, and the same mission given in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Can you see that we aren't too different at all? And these similarities is what binds us together. God is the glue to our community. He brings different people together. Now what does embracing diversity look like? It is easy enough to say we embrace diversity as a Christian community, but what does it even look like? Jesus, put, Jesus puts it simply in John chapter 15 verse 7. This is my command, love each other. By loving others, we embra embrace diversity. When we love those who are sleeping on the streets, those who are refugees in our country, and those with wild personalities, we are embracing diversity. It is simple enough to say we love each other, but it must be genuine love. In 1 John 3 verse 18, it tells us how we can show true love. Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. It is through our actions that we prove that we truly love. Because when we take action in a situation, we are giving of ourselves. We are being servant-hearted in love towards others. Now why do we need diversity in the body of Christ? We are all made in the image of God. He formed each and every one of us in the womb and made us into the people we are today. God loves each of us 
and wants us all to dwell with him one day. Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 After this I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed, they were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. When Jesus comes back, he is taking every type of person out there. Now, in our Christian community, we need some, some difference. Not everyone can preach, otherwise we wouldn't have a congregation. Not everyone can usher, otherwise there, wouldn't, there would be no one on the music team. Can you see that in the body of Christ, we need diversity? Everyone has different gifts and, and callings. So I encourage you today, be inclusive with everyone around you. Give others the opportunity to let their gifts shine. Encourage one another in your calling so that the body of Christ can be strong and fully able to do the work of God. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for making each and every one of us unique. We are all made in your image. We pray today that you would help us to not look at others to help us look at others' hearts and not at their outward appearance. Help us to love as you loved. We pray that you would help us do this. In your name, amen. Let's come around the word of God together today. We're in a a great season in our three churches here and in the city at Adelaide Christian Centre and in Tennant Creek because we're focusing on relationships. We're running a series, a 40-day series called... uh, Uh, 40 days of supporting relationships. Life is better connected. And so we're really praying that through this season, people will not only focus on that, but that um, relationships would be enhanced and blessed as we think about how we can do life together better. So this morning, I have a, a unique message called, This One Word Will Dramatically Improve Your Relationships and Your Life. This One Word Will Dramatically Improve Your Relationships and your life. And it's this word, listen, listen. I really believe that if we learn to listen well, it will improve the quality of our relationships. We'll discover um, deeper enjoyment in our relationships when we learn to listen well. I really believe too that listening well is an expression of love. When we don't listen well, we're not showing any interest in the other. We're not really appreciating them, valuing them, validating them and loving them. But when we listen well, obviously people feel heard. They feel like they're, they're special, that we feel, they feel like we're interested in them and that we love them. But isn't it true that to listen well is one of the most difficult things that we can do? How many times have I found myself sitting there hearing somebody audibly but not really listening? They might be talking for a little while and I've been drifting off somewhere else in my thinking and my focus and I haven't really heard a word that they've said or that wretched mobile phone distracts us in the middle of a conversation. Uh, Early in my marriage, I'd often sit there reading a newspaper while I was with my wife out having a coffee and then I woke up to woke up to myself one day and realized that's probably not a good idea because you know, it it's, it's just doesn't work, does it? To, to, to listen well, we need to be totally focused. But, you know, it's, it's not easy. And I want to give you a little disclaimer here today, even though I'm preaching about this. Um, I'm a kind of um, recovering bad listener trying to become a good listener. And, uh, you know, who's got it down pat? No, none of us. We're all bad listeners at times. And But nevertheless, it's something that we should focus on and try to uh, improve our capacity and ability to listen well. So I want to give you a key verse today from James chapter 1, verse 19. It says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of, note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry. I want to encourage you today to set your default setting at listen. You know, we all have computers and we know that we can set our computer up, configure it to have certain default settings. 
goes to a particular web browser or a particular program. That's the default setting and we can change that. And I reckon, you know, when it comes to communication, we need to set our default setting to listen, to listen. You know, so often people's default setting isn't at listen, it's at speak. Speak, 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 and maybe listen, but not really listen. And how many times have we actually been bailed up by people who are just talking kind of at you? I'll talk more about that in a minute. But I want to ask you this question. You know, have you set your default setting at listen? Because to listen is such a, an important thing if we're going to have great relationships. We've got to practice zipping it. I don't know whether that's a saying unique to Australians, but uh, to zip it means to just stop tight those lips and don't speak. Pause, hit the pause button, so to speak. If you're a real talker, hit the pause button and listen. Create space to listen to others. It's so critical because, frankly, people just just uh, are not into it when somebody's just talking, 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 talking. I want to encourage you to set your default setting at listen. So here's a few keys uh, at uh, what it, for, for what it really means to become a good listener. Firstly, look behind or beyond the words. Look behind or beyond the words. So often we just react to what's being said rather than considering what, what might be going on behind those words. For example, your colleague or your spouse snaps at you. You know, it just comes out of the blue. Boom, they've snapped at you. They've bitten your head off, so to speak. Now it's easy to react to all of that. Or we can pause for a moment and think, well, what's going on behind that reaction and those words that have been spoken? Is there something more going on? Maybe they've had a bad day. Maybe they're not feeling well. And so to become a good listener, we have to look behind the words to what people are really on about. It's about learning to listen to them, not just what they are saying, and to hear them as human beings who are going through all sorts of stuff at given times in the day or in their lives. I really think it's important to look behind the words. And of course, this takes practice. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't even bother with that. And I think it's important to learn to stop and bite that tongue and listen. What's really going on here? Are they really just having a go at me or is there something a bit deeper happening behind the scenes? I think that's really important. And I actually believe this helps to uh, helps us to become um, more empathizing with people. Empathy is such a wonderful quality, the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. And I think people really need that from each one of us, especially those who are close to us. So look behind and beyond the words. The next thing is, is don't be a cutter offerer. Don't be a cutter offerer. I've got to tell you, it's one of the banes of my life when I'm talking to somebody and they cut me off mid-sentence. And some people are just real good at that. You can hardly get a word out and boom, they've cut you off. They want to say what they want to say. They're not really hearing you out. The only exception to that, of course, is if you're talking to somebody who is just uh, forgetting to put the full stop after the sentence and they're just sort of running on, running on with uh, everything they want to say. Sometimes you've got to kind of just have your little bit as well. But generally what I find is that people are not good listeners in this regard. They tend to half listen. You're starting to share what you want to share and they cut you off. If that's you, and often it's been me too, but if that's you, just don't do it. Don't cut people off. Listen to them. Let them finish their sentences and, and create a bit of space and, and try and hear what they're saying and not just dive in with what you want to say. So don't be a cutter offerer. Here's another one. Don't be an advice giver. An advice giver. Some people have just developed the pattern or habit of advice giving. Some person comes up and shares a problem or a need or some difficulty they're facing and instantly the person the other person um, rattles off all of their advice and their experience and how you can fix this and how you can do that. And I've got to tell you, that's just annoying. That's really annoying because you know what? It doesn't tell the person that you're listening to them. You're just saying what you want to say. And often quick advice givers aren't really and usually don't give good advice. So unless it's asked for, don't be an advice giver. Listen. People don't necessarily need what you can tell them about or tell them or give them advice. They don't need that. What they need is you. They just need a listening ear. And, you know, as a pastor all these many years, it's been a temptation for me when I've listened to a person's situation or their problem. It's a temptation to me to dive in there and give advice. But you know what? As I've matured over the years, I tend not to do that. 
I create a big gap between what I think I might want to say and what I do end up sharing with that person. And most times, particularly if they're really hurting, what people need is just somebody to be with them and listen. Listening is so important. That leads on to this thought, next point. Don't be scared of silence. I got to confess, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with silence. If I'm with somebody, particularly somebody I don't know well, and there's silence, it's awkward. It's uncomfortable. And so I want to dive in there and fill in the gap with talking. Now, sometimes that can be good because it can help stimulate conversation. Nothing wrong with that. But I think if you're really serious about developing meaningful relationships, we need to kind of, I reckon we need to be comfortable with a bit of silence. I found this uh, interesting when I've traveled to other countries and to different cultures. Some cultures are very comfortable with silence. They'll sit in a group and say nothing. And I'm sitting there in that group listening to the silence (laughs) and wondering when's somebody going to say something. But they're very comfortable in some cultures uh, with silence. In fact, it can be quite disrespectful to start yapping on. But just to be with people because people are more interested in you and we need to be more interested in them. Here's another one. Give your full attention to the person that is speaking to you and affirm to them that you are listening. Look at them. I said earlier that, you know, when I was first married, I'd be with my wife alone and I'd be reading the newspaper. That is not giving my full attention to my wife. And so when we're with people um, and we're wanting to have a decent conversation, let them know that you're listening. Look at them. Uh, don't stare at them, but look at, you know, towards them and, and nod and give them some affirmation that you understand what they're saying. You can actually uh, say things like, um, you know, if I've heard you correctly, you're saying da 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 If I've heard you correctly, then this is what I think you're saying. Because isn't it true that often we don't understand fully what the person's saying, but we think we do. So when you feed back what that person has said to you, you know, I, I think you've said this, A, B, C, and they say, yeah, that's right, then you know you've actually heard the person. I think that's a really good skill, and counsellors use this a lot when they're counselling people. Um, so we need to give our full attention to people and affirm in some way that not only we're listening and hearing, but that we've understood what they are saying. I've got a picture here at the top of this study and I don't know whether you can see that, but it's a man and a woman sort of in kind of a, an embrace and they're together and it's quite intimate except in one hand is a mobile phone and both of them have a mobile phone in their hands while they're embracing and they're totally distracted by that, the glow of that phone. And, you know, that says so much about our poor ability to communicate and mobile phones, I've got to tell you, if you're at the dinner table, if you're out having a coffee with the missus or with your friend or whoever it is, get rid of the phone. Just put it away. It's okay. The world is not going to cave in if you don't look at that phone every 10 seconds. Of course, that can create another uh, issue as well. Sometimes we have a, a problem with separation anxiety with our technology, young people particularly. It's kind of a bit of an epidemic, the experts are telling us. Separation anxiety from having that comfort of of having that phone there and so anyway I just want to encourage you to get rid of the distractions give the person you're talking to and listening to your fullest attention and affirm to them what you think they're saying really important Um, what else can we talk about here's another one don't talk at people (laughs) I've got to tell you so many people do this. I'll be there in a, after church or I'll be down in somewhere in a group and somebody comes up and they're just talking at you. They're not interested in you. They just want to offload their stuff. They just want to tell you what they're thinking and what they're doing and, and their issues and all of that. Don't talk at people. It's insulting. It really is. Um, you know, I think some people talk a lot, but they don't really connect in a loving way with others that considers the other person. They're not really interested in you. They're just interested in them. And we all know what it's like to be confronted with that. And frankly, we're all probably guilty of it. So it's something we've got to watch. Don't talk at people. Don't just offload your stuff onto them. Care about them enough to take interest in them and listen to them. Ask some probing questions. You know, how was your day? And 
um, you know, obviously don't interrogate them, but ask them how is your day, how things going, and listen to them, take interest in them, and put your own interests aside for a little while. Really important. There's another great verse as we come to a close this morning. Proverbs 10, verse 19 in the Living, New Living Translation. Proverbs 10 and verse 19. If you have your Bibles there, you might like to open to that, or if you've got your smartphone, uh, that's good too. So Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 19. Here it goes. Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> I love it. The Bible is so good sometimes, especially the modern translations. That's basically what it's saying. Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. I love it. The uh, Berean translation says, When words are many, sin is unavoidable. But he who restrains his lips is wise. So there's got to be some control and, 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 you know, just... Be conscious of what you're saying. Don't rush in with a lot of words, but do a lot of listening. Lastly this morning, so we've talked about being slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to speak, and here's the last one, be slow to anger. Be slow to anger. Heated or heightened emotion does not help good communication. We know that. And it deadens our ability to truly hear the other. Of course, this is a tough one, isn't it? Um, controlling our emotions, especially when the, there's, there might be good reason to feel heated or feel upset. But, you know, I think we can develop the art to be slow to anger. It doesn't say don't be angry, but this is about control. I think there's a lot of nonsense in the world of psychology that says you have to get your feelings out all the time and go and vent your feelings and if you're angry go and beat up a beanbag or whatever it is I'm not convinced that's the best way to go I don't think either should we deny our feelings so he's not saying don't be angry he's saying be slow to anger so there's that element of control where we're not going to be ruled by our emotions but there is a time and a place to express them in appropriate ways and you're going to do far better in life if you learn the art of self-control than you are by just losing it all the time and once again, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a recovering, um, how would you say, quick to anger person. Not that I've got an anger problem, but, you know, I, I think we're all in that boat, aren't we, where it's so easy just to react, so easy just to get angry, so easy to let our emotions rule us when really the Bible tells us, and it's common sense anyway, that we should be slow to anger and to control our emotions. So I just want to leave you with that thought lastly because, uh, you know, I, often I see people, uh, they're just all emotion in their communication and it's never never that good. I'm not saying it shouldn't be emotion, but we need to be careful of it and control it. So anyway, there's some thoughts. I'm no, I've got to tell you, I don't really consider myself a great expert, but these are the things that I've learned uh, through study and through trying to apply it to my own life. So let me just go through these things very quickly again. Set your default setting at listen. Just become a listener. Listen more. Listen well. Look behind the words. Beyond the words, hear the person, what's going on in their life. Don't just react to surface level communication. Uh, don't be a cutter offerer. Don't be an advice giver. Don't be scared of silence. Do give your full attention and focus to the person you're listening to and affirm to them that you've understood what they're saying. Um, and don't talk at people. Don't talk at people. So to be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry. I reckon this is what really will help us. And, and, and as I said in the opening statement here, this will dramatically improve, improve your relationships. Just blow it out of the water. You'll, you'll just have fantastic, superb relationships if you can become a good listener. Of course, the other side of the coin is to learn to be a good communicator as in speaking as well. But that's another story. But I wanted to focus on listening today, and I trust this has been a help to you. And perhaps this week you can think about setting your default setting to listen. Listen. Try and hear people and <laughs> zip that lip more than you perhaps normally do. So I want to encourage you with that. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you that Jesus said, him who has ears, let him hear. And so often we're deaf to people, Father. We... We uh, are not great listeners. And I pray you'd help us to 
develop that art, that we would listen to people. I know that sometimes in the rush of the day it's hard, but, Lord, when we're wanting to have conversations and wanting to build relationship, wanting to have good communication, I pray you'd help us to learn to be good listeners, that we would show love to others and respect to them by using our two ears and closing our one mouth. Father, we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. I hope that's been a bit of a help to you today. Certainly giving me food for thought as I head off into this week. God bless you. We'll close with a song, and I trust you'll have a great week. If you can't get to church next week, and if you, or if you can, you've got to register by emailing info at newlifeonline.org.au. Send us an email. Let us know you're coming because of the COVID thing. And uh, if you can't come to church, then check us out online again, 10 a.m. Uh, here on our YouTube and Facebook channel. So God bless you. Still, I